In step three, we're going to load a CAD model of the end effector of your choice, train the TCP, and create clearance shapes around that tool. So we're going to go ahead and click Tool. And you'll see three tabs, Manage, Properties, and Clearance. So in the Manage tab, if we wanted to import a CAD model of the end effector, uh, we would put it in USB into the Teach Pendant, and we would click New Tool. We can import a step file or a .obj file for the CAD model of the end effector. In the case of Import Tool, if there's another system where we've already imported that CAD model, created the clearance shapes, and set the TCP, we can then save that, we can export that tool, and then we could import that .pak file is the format extension for those tools. In this case, um, we're going to look at a tool that we've already loaded. So we've loaded the uh, .obj uh, file for that tool, and we'll look at properties. Now in properties, here we want to set the payload, we want to set the center of gravity, and also train the TCP or the tool center point of that end effector. So for tool properties, the tool payload and the center of gravity, we can set that manually here. We also need to set that at the UR page for end effector and TCP. So we'll go there next. Well, you see that for tool center point, that's currently grayed out, but we can select a named tool center point. The location where we do that is under general TCP. And under general TCP, we can uh, name a TCP. We could create a new TCP. And then use the wizard provided to train that TCP. So we would touch uh, to a series of uh, points on a corner to train that TCP. Now, when we go to uh, UR Caps under Tool, under Properties, we could then select that named TCP. So that's how we would uh, bring in the values for the TCP. But the payload and center of gravity, we would set in both places. You would set it here at the bottom of the general TCP page, payload and center of gravity. You could also use the wizard uh, provided to set those values, but then you would need to manually copy those values under UR Caps and Tool Properties page. Now the purpose of importing a CAD model um, into the uh, Actinav Tool page is so that we can accurately set clearance shapes. The clearance shapes around the tool are used so that when the robot autonomously moves through the space, neither the robot itself nor the tool attached, the end of arm tool attached to the robot will touch anything within its environment. So it's important that we accurately train the clearance shapes. The general uh, approach to training clearance shapes is we want to use as few shapes as possible while accurately covering uh, the, the tool. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's have a look under the clearance tab. And you can see in this view, uh, you can see the robot has these green bubbles around it. And you can also see the end of arm tool. In this case, we're using a suction end of arm tool. Um, and you can see some bubbles created around that. The way to train uh, clearance shapes is by using this button, add a new shape. Now we only use three types of clearance shapes, spheres, lozenges, and capsules. So you're gonna wanna pick uh, one of those three methods. In this case, let's go ahead and delete uh, one of the spheres so we can see it disappear. When you touch each of the spheres, they highlight on the screen in red. So if we wanna create that clearance shape again, we would create a sphere. And where that sphere is going to appear is at the zero, zero, zero of the flange of the robot. So you see under shape coordinates says offset from tool flange. So let's give this sphere some, some mass, let's say two inches or 50 millimeters. We wanna go uh, up so we can see uh, that will be in positive Z. 
and we want to move in positive x as well. And you can see we're shimmying that uh, clearance shape around. The nice thing about using a CAD model is then we can see that on the screen and then accurately train our clearance shapes. So what we've done in this case is we've created four spheres around this section of the end of arm tool and we also have a capsule coming out here as well as a second capsule at an angle to represent this bend. So that's how we're covering this end effector. Since we've already trained that, we're going to go ahead and discard that. Uh, it's very important that you name your uh, clearance shapes uh, useful names so that when you uh, touch on them, you can see what they are and you can easily see them highlight in the screen as well. So once we've trained our, our clearance shapes, a nice method for checking uh, if we've trained our clearance shapes accurately is to place the uh, end effector underneath the 3D scanner, take a 3D scan and look at the raw point cloud and see how that compares. It should match up nicely with the clearance shapes you've trained. So once you've trained your, uh, your properties, your uh, TCP and your tool payload and center of gravity, you've set your clearance shapes, you can then uh, save that tool, you can name it, and you can export it to a USB stick, which you can then use on other systems.